preseason football is upon us. The San Francisco 49ers are traveling to play the Tennessee Titans. But who's going to play in the game for the 49ers? And who's going to play in the game for the Tennessee Titans? And which players need to make an impact for the 49ers in this game to help their chances of making the roster? All that and more in this episode of 49ers Cutback. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show, everyone. Football's here. The San Francisco 49ers are going to be squaring off with the Tennessee Titans in their first preseason matchup of the season. And I know it's just preseason, but there's a true enjoyment to being able to sit back and watch the 49ers play again. It's a kickoff of a new season, and everyone's emotions are on a thought of hope. And that's exactly what the 49ers and Titans have. And win this, we're going to get to see some very interesting players play. Because even though the usual suspects is usually who we want to see, there's some guys that are trying to earn a spot on this roster. And there's also some players that we're excited to see what they can do. How many of these rookies can make an impact? How many of the new additions can make an impact to the 49ers? But also, we can take a look at the Tennessee Titans and see who exactly is playing for them because that'll give us a key idea of who our guys are going to be playing against. Now, Kyle Shanahan had revealed already that he's unlikely to play most of his starters. And why do you say most of your starters? Well, the reason being that you have some positions where you lack depth because of injury or because of other reasons that you have to play some of your starting players. You don't want to do that for the most part. You want to have a couple of instances during the season, during the preseason that you play them, uh, for limited snaps as you gear up to the season. But, so Kyle doesn't want to play his normal starters. He wants to let this thing work out. Tennessee, on the other hand, might have a different thought process. And so I went ahead and started doing some investigating, finding out who Tennessee is going to have playing in this game. That way we can find out some of the matchups that are going to be cool for the 49ers. Now, of course, there's no way to know for sure without Kyle Shanahan saying what the overall roster is as far as depth is going to look like for this game. Who's going to start the game? Who's going to play most of the snaps? Uh, but we're going to try to get into a projected idea of who could play for the 49ers to start the game. Some likely guys like Brock Purdy are going to play in this game. In fact, I'd put it at a highly doubtful uh, Brock Purdy plays, even though Kyle has not said. So which quarterback? We're going to get into all that and more. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're listening to audio platform, 49ers cut back on Believe. Please give it a five-star rating. If you're going to bet, bet with Bet Online. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything online sports betting. Right now, you can receive a 50% free bet up to $250 on your first deposit to bet on anything from the Olympics to baseball to Formula One racing. Bet Online is every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. The game's over. Head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or, or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, for your 50% free bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. Bet online, the game starts here. So let's figure out who's going to play for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, the Tennessee Titans, of course, are going to be hosting the San Francisco 49ers, and the general manager is a familiar name. Rand Carthon runs the Tennessee Titans, and the Tennessee Titans made a coaching change going from Vrabel to going to Brian Callahan, and this is going to be Brian Callahan's first game at the helm for the Tennessee Titans. Now, one thing we do know is that there's going to be several players out for the Titans. Brian Callahan revealed that on Thursday. Uh, defensive lineman Jeffrey Simmons will not be playing, and edge rusher Harold Landry will not be playing against the San Francisco 49ers on Saturday. So two of their key defensive players will be out. 
Uh, Callahan also said Caleb Farley. He's dealing with a hamstring. Uh, Cedric Gray is dealing with a shoulder. Ryan Stonehouse dealing with a leg. And Nick Vanette uh, are all expect all not expected to suit up on Saturday night. So we're not going to see Caleb Farley or Cedric Gray, um, which, you know, Gray, I was interested to see. Could have been interesting. So they're going to be missing some key guys, and so are the 49ers, and we'll get to them in a second. He also revealed, though, that the starters will play a series or two before the backups come in. So that means we're going to get to see quarterback Will Levis. We're going to get to see new addition wide receiver Calvin Ridley. They're going to go out there and compete, which means we should get some cool matchups on the outside. Now, of course, they do have an injury at wide receiver. So no DeAndre Hopkins. He will not be playing in this game, but uh, we'll still get to see Calvin Ridley. We'll still get to see Traylon Burks and Tyler Boyd, uh, a pretty good wide receiver room. And that's good news for the 49ers who are looking to get some work for some of their cornerbacks, including young guys and not just young guys looking to prove it, uh, but young guys looking to make this team guys like Ambry Thomas and Sam Womack. who got to show that they are going to make this roster. Now the 49ers practice on Thursday revealed that they had a lot of guys missing. Uh, first off, of course, guys who weren't practicing Debo Samuel. And I was at practice on Wednesday, and I did see Debo Samuel uh, get nicked up, go to the sideline, work with a trainer, came back for a play, had a nice run around the right side on a swing pass, got about 25 yards, looked explosive, but then immediately pulled himself out. So Debo did not practice. Debo will not play in this game, as far as my opinion. I, I don't think he will. There's always a shot, but I think he'll be sitting out. Uh, cornerbacks Yamato Lenore and Mooney Ward, I think, are very unlikely to suit up and play against the Tennessee Titans. I think the 49ers elected a lot last year to not play Mooney Ward uh, in key situations in the preseason. I think they'll do the same thing, and I think they'll add Lenore to that mix as well. Of course, Brandon Ayuk is holding in. He's not going to be playing. Ricky Pearsall, once again, missed practice. He's not even wearing a blue jersey out there. So uh, Ricky Pearsall is very likely out for the game versus the Tennessee Titans. We can be hopeful that we will see him in the second preseason matchup versus the New Orleans Saints because the 49ers have eight days to prepare for that. Maybe he'll get back out there. Chris Conley missed practice, and Conley, I also witnessed, uh, get a little nicked up. He caught a deep 50-yard pass down the seam, and when he was tackled, his ankle was kind of rolled upon. He came back into practice and played the rest of the 11-on-11 team drills on Wednesday. He did not look as fast. He looked like he was hobbling a little bit, but working through the pain. So maybe they just gave him a day off to go with, you know, the today's day off, and it just combines together, and maybe he'll be ready for Saturday. So Conley, I think, has a shot to play against the Titans. Uh, Isaac Yedem, the 49ers cornerback, I think is going to be another cornerback that they don't have play in this game. He missed uh, three straight practices, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I think it's unlikely that he will be going, so we will not get our first look at Isaac Yedem in the preseason. Of course, Christian McCaffrey, he's out for all preseason. He will not play in any of those games. Elijah Mitchell dealing with a strained hamstring. He's out for this one. Could be back next week, maybe even for joint practices against the New Orleans Saints. Uh, but the 49ers brought in several running backs to be able to cover up for that because Patrick Taylor has also been dealing with an injury. The 49ers free agent signing from Green Bay. I don't know what the likelihood of Patrick Taylor playing is, but I would say it's probably not very good considering that he's missed multiple practices in a row, including Thursday's practice. Darrell Luter Jr. went from working on a side field during Wednesday's practices to not practicing at all on Thursday. So I don't know if we're going to get to see Darrell Luter Jr., which it would have been his first preseason uh, game of his entire career. Demetrius Flanagan fouls. He's going to be out. He's been missing practice. He will not be suited up and ready to go. Logan Thomas dealing with a hamstring. The tight end will not play. Isaac Garendo, he's still going to be on the shelf for a couple weeks. He's still out. Fred Warner wasn't going to play anyways, but uh, with him sitting out with foot irritation. Then the 49ers have a couple offensive linemen who are likely to not play. John Feliciano is back on the shelf after being back for a few days with the 49ers. He's unlikely to play. Spencer Burford still dealing with a broken hand. He's probably not going to play. Uh, defensive lineman Sam Okawanu has been in and out of the lineup, and I believe Sam Okawanu will be out as well. Uh, defensive tackle Jordan Elliott, add him to the injury list. I don't know how significant his injury was. On Wednesday, I watched him leave practice, go over to the side field and work with a trainer for a little while before going into the locker room. 
Uh, he did not practice on Thursday, so we might not get to see Jordan Elliott in this preseason game, which I believe he would have started this game if uh, he wasn't injured because injured because he's part of that second team rotation. So as you can see, the 49ers are going to have several players that are not going to be available. That's part of the reason you have a 91-man roster in the 49ers case because they have the pathway program. The international pathway program allows them to keep one extra player that's from that program. So they have 91, and they've been having to sign guys along the way, including they're probably going to have to sign a punter if they haven't already at time of recording. Uh, they, they hadn't. So uh, they're going to have to get a punter, someone in to come for Wisnowski, and that's still to come likely. So let's go through who the likely starters on offense will be for the San Francisco 49ers. This does not reveal overall pecking order. I think there's a lot to be determined here, but I think the 49ers got some uh, some things that are definitely easier to figure out, and we'll go through the reasoning for why these guys are likely to be starters. Uh, first off, Brandon Allen. I think he's going to get the first chance to be the quarterback uh, for the 49ers in this matchup. No Brock Purdy, and it could be easily be Joshua Dobbs. So I'm not 100% it's going to be Brandon Allen. I just think that they're going to rotate these two guys through the preseason games. One time it'll be Brandon Allen. The next time it'll be um, Joshua Dobbs. The same way they did last year with Trey Lance and with Sam Darnold until eventually Darnold became the backup. I think they're both going to get equal opportunity. But right now, Brandon Allen has a more firm control in this offense as he's been in it for a couple of years now. So Allen will take the early part, I believe, as the second team quarterback, but start this game. And then I think at some point, Josh Dobbs will come in and then we'll get to see Josh Dobbs for the first time. And then I think uh, the Saints game, I think it'll be Josh Dobbs who will ultimately come in first as a second quarterback. So it could be flipped. It could be Dobbs instead of Allen in this one. But I, I am kind of thinking the 49ers go with Brandon Allen in this one. Uh, running back, I think Jordan Mason is going to start at running back and uh, he'll probably get you know a couple series and then they'll pull him out and go with some of the other guys, but I think injuries at the position, they'll start le letting Jordan Mason get some carries. And because they're missing McCaffrey and Elijah Mitchell, uh, they will eventually pull Jordan Mason before he gets too, my too many touches. But I expect him to start at running back. Normally, Kyle Juszczyk plays in the preseason because he's the one of the only fullbacks. I don't think he's going to play in this game. I think at first, Jake Tungus is going to start at fullback for the 49ers when they're in their 21 and 22 personnel. Uh, he played fullback with the Chicago Bears, and he played fullback at practice the other day. So I expect it to be Jake Tungus, uh, and at some point I expect it to be Braden Willis. Those two guys will kind of interchange as Willis will play some tight end, whether that's move tight end or in line, and same for Tungus, and they'll go back and forth between the two. But with Juszczyk getting more vet days or during training camp, in fact, he had never gotten any before, I think it's likely he gets lumped back into vet days with the rest of the 49ers starters, and we won't see Kyle Juszczyk. So expect to see Jake Tungus, number 88, lining up at fullback for some of this game. And it could be Braden Willis, but I just believe it's going to be Tungus that starts. Uh, Jawan Jennings and Chris Conley, I think, are going to be the first two wide receivers out there. I I think I think Conley's going to be able to play, and he's been getting a lot of starting X reps. And then I think Jawan Jennings will be the starting Z in place of Debo Samuel. Uh, number one, you probably weren't going to play him anyways, but then he got nicked up, so you don't want him out there. But the 49ers need Jawan Jennings and Chris Conley to eat up some of the snaps. Conley was going to play anyways, uh, but Jennings normally plays in the preseason, and you need him to eat up snaps because you have so many injuries at the wide receiver position that you just got to make sure you have guys that are going to be out there. The starting tight end for this game could be Eric Saubert. He is ahead of the young guys right now. Logan Thomas dealing with the hamstring, not a part of this uh, competition right now. So Saubert has looked the most consistent. He's looked the best. And I think we're going to see him start with the 49ers uh, first unit in this preseason game. And he'll have, you know, he'll have a tough task. He'll have to block some really good Tennessee Titans defenders. And that'll be a lot of fun you know, to see him line up with, you know, some of these guys that are going to be out there playing a linebacker. Of course, we won't see Harold Landry. So he won't be getting an edge rush coming from there, but uh, they'll still have Rashad Weaver out there, um, you know, and, and they'll still have Caleb Murphy as well. So some guys out there that can still put pressure on from this Tennessee Titans defense, and they have a pretty good defensive line as well. And we'll be talking about the 49ers offensive line in a second, but uh, names that are familiar to 49er fans, 
Uh, Sebastian Joseph Day, who came over last year halfway through the season from the Chargers, he was with the 49ers all the way through the Super Bowl. He's going to be uh, playing in this 3-4 defense for the Tennessee Titans. And then, of course, Marlon Davidson, who was with the 49ers last year as well, a defensive tackle, he's going to be playing as well. And he'll probably be starting in place of Jeffrey Simmons. So that'll be interesting. And then one guy I'm really excited to see, and that's what's going to make a big difference between who starts in the interior part of the offensive line for the 49ers. Devondre Sweat uh, is going to be playing nose tackle. So that's going to be a lot of fun to see the 49ers having to go against some of these players and some guys that they're used to. Sebastian Joseph Day, Marlon uh, Davis, Davison is more basically like going through training camp last year. It be a lot of fun. Now at right tackle, I expect Colton McKivitz to start at right tackle. I don't think he'll get a lot of reps, but maybe like a couple of series that we'll see him out there and kind of just bridge the gap until we get to the next set of offensive linemen, uh, offensive linemen with there not being that many tackles on the 49ers roster. Dominic Pooney, the 49ers rookie, I think will get the first uh, go of it at right guard. I think he normally would have anyways. And so he's going to get starting reps there. And it'll be our first look at number 77. If you didn't know what number he was, 77. Watch Dominic Pooney in this matchup. Hey, he's a lot of fun. When it comes to pass blocking, he's fantastic. When it comes to run blocking, that's an area to watch. If he starts doing very well in run blocking as well, he conceivably could never let go of this right guard job and be the starter for the 49ers. So he's a player to watch uh, in this game. Now, the next part is interesting because I don't think Jake Brendel is going to play. Uh, they've been monitoring him, having him go in and out of practice, also managing his reps during practice because he's been dealing with the knee tendonitis. So I think the 49ers will elect to keep Jake Brendel out of here. Normally, that would mean a start for John Feliciano. He's been dealing with the knee. I think he's out of this as well. So I think the 49ers are going to start Nick Zakel at center. And a lot of people would have said it would have been Ben Barch. But at training camp so far, Nick Zakel has outplayed Ben Barch to the point that they stopped giving Barch the first team reps. They started giving them to Zakel uh, through the last couple days, last few days of practice. So I think Nick Zakel is going to get the first opportunity to play center. And I think Ben Barch is going to be next to him at left guard. I don't expect Aaron Banks to play in this game. They're going to want to keep him healthy. And they have an abundance of interior offensive linemen and guys that need to prove it at the position. So I think the 49ers will elect to go with Dominic Pooney, Nick Zakel, and Ben Barch as a part of the interior offensive line because Feliciano's out and because you have an injury uh, to Spencer Burford. Those guys are going to get a lot of reps, and so are other guys on the inside like Jared Kingston or Drake Nugent or newly signed Lewis Kidd, who is also going to get some time uh, on the outside. So we'll see what happens. There's a potential always that Jake Brendel could end up playing uh, because of injury, but I think they want to be careful. They'll probably potentially have him suited up just in case for emergency situations, but expect to see a lot of Nick Zakel, expect to see a lot of Ben Barch. And then at left tackle, I got Jalen Moore. Of course, Jalen Moore is the backup um, to Trent Williams, but he's been getting all the reps. And so we'll see him early on. At some point, we will see this change and Chris Hubbard will step in and he'll get the playing time at left tackle after Jalen Moore goes out. But I think they'll give an extensive look to Jalen Moore early on in this game. And he's been doing pretty good. Uh, very, very confident guy. And you will also see the likes of Brandon Parker and Sebastian Gutierrez. They'll be playing as well. Isaac Alarcone, he's from the International um, Pathway Program. We'll see him as well. So 49ers are dealing with injuries, and a couple of those injuries could force Jake Brendel out there, but I think they're going to try to be careful with it and go with the other guys. Now, that we talked about the defensive linemen on the inside. That's going to be a lot of fun, and it's also going to be fun watching some of the linebackers uh, for the Tennessee Titans that are going to be out there. They they got like Kenneth Murray. Uh, he He's going to be fun to watch. And then they have you know some guys that are behind them that we're going to get to see as well. So it's going to be a fun matchup for the 49ers. When you look at the the cornerbacks, the 49ers are going to be going against to uh, going against. Uh, Legarius Sneed could play a, you know a little bit. Um, that's always fun after what happened in the Super Bowl last year. And then they're going to have Awuzie as well uh, playing cornerback. And if you thought that you were escaping Quadre Diggs and Jamal Adams, you're not. They're no longer in Seattle, but they are in Tennessee, and we will likely see uh, their their debut. Jamal Adams and and Quandre Diggs uh, playing with Amani Hooker and some of the very talented safeties they got there, including Elijah Molden. It's going to be a fun a fun game for offense versus defense 
But those are the projected starters for the 49ers. And definitely don't think it's I don't think I'm 100 percent right. I, I'm just going off what I've seen and just kind of things that Kyle has said to try to make an educated guess. But that's exactly what it is. Now looking at the defense, oh we Drake Jackson, of course, goes on the IR, and we weren't expecting to see him in the preseason either. Uh, Leonard Floyd is not going to play in this game, most likely. I don't see the 49ers putting out a 10-year vet to play in this game at defensive end if they don't have to. Nick Bosa is not going to play. I don't even think that's uh, a question. Uh, but Etor Gross Matos will play. He's the number three defensive end, and he will get the starting snaps. And they've been starting Robert Beal opposite him as they've been preparing for this game during the preseason. So expect to see Etor Gross Matos and Robert Beal Jr. as the starting defensive ends. Of course, after that, you'll see Austin uh, Bryant. You'll see um, a couple other guys that are going to be looking to make this team. I know the 49ers have made some adjustments because they have some injuries at the position. Um, so we'll see Austin Bryant, and we will see, you know, Alex Barrett. I wanted to see Sam Okawanu, but he's not going to be playing. Potentially, he's been dealing with an injury. Uh, so those guys are going to get a lot of snaps and a lot of opportunities to get out there and make some plays for the San Francisco 49ers football team uh at defensive tackle i thought jordan elliott was going to be playing but since he's dealing with a little bit of an injury i'm thinking maybe they're going to be careful with him and so i think they're actually going to start malik collins and here's an instance where you have a guy who's been in the league for a long time and you wouldn't expect him to play in this game especially because he's a starter but he might have to give the 49ers some reps on the def defensive line to make sure that they have even if it's a few series just to make sure they have enough snaps and they don't you know, overwork some of these guys. And I know there's young guys that want to get as many snaps as they can, uh, but you have to make sure that they don't tire out and they don't wear down and, and you know get into a bad situation. So Malik Collins, I expect to play a little bit. I don't expect Javon Hargrave to play at all. I don't think he will play. And I think Kevin Givens will be the other starting defensive tackle for the 49ers. But I, I think at some point, Givens... And um, Malik Collins will give way, and then we'll get to see those other guys that are really competing to be one of the 49ers' defensive tackles, including T.Y. McGill, who's been a part of the 49ers off and on, including practice squad. He's been in this league for a long time. He'll get a lot of reps in this game. Malia Davis is a guy that's trying to prove he belongs and will be the fifth defensive lineman. Uh, we'll see if, if he can hold off the young upstarts like Shaquille Brown and Evan Anderson, who will be a part of that last rotation trying to prove that they can overtake Kalia Davis and T.Y. McGill and make this roster. So we'll see a lot of those guys, but I think we might see Malik Collins. We'll see. Uh, there's a chance he doesn't play at all, but maybe we'll get a couple of series out of him, which I think would have been Jordan Elliott's if Elliott wouldn't have went down. Now, the linebacker group that we've seen over the last couple of days on Wednesday and Thursday of practice uh, saw that Curtis Robinson was playing Mike linebacker. So basically what they elected to do with no Fred playing Instead of moving Devondre Campbell to Mike and he would be the normal backup Mike, they're leaving him at Will Linebacker and then they're putting D winners at Sam. So that way they don't have a lot of change up and movement. They can get used to a particular group of individuals playing together. And I don't think Campbell's going to play a lot, but I think they want to see him play within this 40 yards defense and get him reacclimated to this style of defense that he hasn't played very much. So I think Devondre Campbell will play early and he will be playing alongside Curtis Robinson and D Winters. And I think DFF probably would have been the starting Mike linebacker for this particular unit. But of course, he's dealing with the injury and he's going to be out. They're going to be uh, having some fun stopping the Tennessee Titans running game. Uh, I mean, it's, they brought in, I mean, this is the thing. They bring in Tony Pollard. Uh, they got Ty J Spears. They've, they've got some guys that can go out there and make some plays. Uh, so I think that's going to be fun as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they handle uh, a Conquo as well. So, Josh Wiley, Aconquo, some young guys that can step in there and potentially make some plays um, for this for this Tennessee Titans team and go against these linebackers and the 49ers safeties. Now, when you're looking at the offensive line, they're going to be starting rookie J.C. Latham, it appears. Uh, so he's going to get a lot of work, and that'll be a nice competition for Robert Beal Jr. And um, for Etor Gross Matos, Peter Skaronsky is going to play left guard. So we'll see how he matches up. They got Lloyd Cushenberry. Dylan Radins, he's playing right guard, and Nicholas Petit Ferrer playing right tackle. At some point, we're going to get to see our boy uh, Daniel Brunskill play, and we'll see how he does. That'll be interesting to see, you know, how he comes in and plays for this 
Tennessee Titans team. He has been relegated to a backup role. But we all know Daniel Brunskill is one of the best backup offensive linemen in the entire league. So let's talk about the secondary a little bit. Uh, just from the what we've seen and how they're lining these guys up, it's going to be Rock Yassin uh, playing on the outside as one of the outside corners and Renardo Green. So when the 49ers are in their base 4-3 during, during uh, preseason games, these two guys are going to be starting against the Titans. You're going to see Green. You're going to see Rock Yassin. And Rock Yassin has been playing very well. He is the fifth best corner in, in my estimation right now. I think it goes Charverius Ward, Diamond Lenore, Isaac Yedem, who unfortunately we're not going to see in this matchup because of injury. But then it goes after that Renardo Green, the young rookie who has got versatility to play outside and inside. And then we've got Rock Yassin. And I think Rock Yassin's battling to make this roster right now. When the 49ers go to nickel, Renardo Green will move inside just like Diamond Lenore does. And Ambry Thomas is going to step in and play that other cornerback position right now because Terrell Luter Jr., unfortunately, is dealing with injury. And you have to be available and ready to play if you're going to make an impact. And he's not available and ready to play. And Ambry Thomas is getting that chance. And Ambry Thomas is a guy that needs a good showing in the preseason if he's going to make this roster. But right now, he might make it out of default because of injuries. I hope not. Uh, but that's what it could be for Ambry Thomas. So those guys are going to be battling, and it's going to be some competition early as we see them go against Calvin Ridley and Tyler Boyd, and not to mention Traylon Burks, who is trying to prove something uh, to his team as well. He has not been a guy they've been super excited about. He hasn't reached the expectations coming out of college. Everyone thought maybe he was a Debo-type player, and that hasn't showed up. So they got some key guys, though. They got Will Levis, who's going to be delivering the football early, and then we'll see the likes of Mason Rudolph and Malik Willis later on in the football game. Now, at safety, I expect the 49ers to go with their starting safeties. So I think that Jair Brown and George Odom are going to start this game. Jair Brown's going into year two, so he needs more reps. George Odom would normally be a backup, but he's playing in place of Tauno Ufonga. And I think they want to see them play together. They've looked great at training camp, but let's see what it looks like against another team. And I expect them to get early reps. I don't think Jair stays in that that long. I think eventually Jair Brown will come out of the game and they will go to the next guy. And they'll they'll bring in their next safety. And in this case, you know, for them, it, it just depends. Is it going to be the new guy, Tracy Walker, that they just signed? Is it going to be Malik Mustafa? Uh, it, it could be any of those guys. My guess is it'll probably be Mustafa. And then at some point, we'll get the safety room of Tracy Walker and Tyler Hawkins playing as well. And then, of course, undrafted free agent Jalen Mahoney will get some snaps later. Uh, but the 49ers had to uh, release Eric Harris, and then now they've brought in Tracy Walker, 43 career starts in the NFL, played for the Detroit Lions, had six starts last year. So an experienced safety to add to the room. So he'll be exciting to, you know, to see what he can do, and they'll be dealing with guys like a Conquo early. And then after that, you know, they've got Josh Wiley and guys like that. So it's going to be fun uh, to see how they – handle this matchup now some guys that need a big showing in training camp guys that are must watch for the san francisco 49ers of course cameron law too uh we know how bad things went last year and if he's going to make this team he hasn't done enough at training camp yet uh, from what i've seen he's had moments he's had flashes uh, but we just haven't seen production from him he's gonna have to produce in the three preseason games to prove that he can make the 49ers roster so cameron law too has got to have a big showing ambry thomas and sam womack have to have big showings as well. Both of them are on the bubble. And we talked about what Ambry Thomas can do. Uh, but some of the things he doesn't do well are special teams and playing physical. Those are going to have to be things he's better at. With Womack, he's good on special teams. And he, they've moved him back to the nickel. But he's got to play really well to be able to take some of the other guys. He's got to prove that his versatility is better than a guy like Rock Yassin or a guy like Darrell Luter Jr., that he's better on special teams and his ability to play outside and inside and play nickel corner will benefit him, but he's going to have to show out. We've seen him have good preseasons in the past. In fact, his rookie season, one of the best preseasons for a defensive back for the four years in a long time, all the interceptions, Danny Gray. And what could make it tough is Danny Gray might not play on Wednesday. He was wearing the blue Jersey. I watched him go through practice. He was doing pretty good as far as finding openings. He would get open Nothing ever went to him when he was open, but when he wasn't open, they threw him the football, which is always interesting. But I seen him favoring his shoulder again. I don't know if he's going to play. 
Here's the problem. If Danny Gray doesn't play in these preseason games, he's not going to make this roster. So Kyle Shanahan's got to have one of those moments where he's got to tell Danny Gray, I need you out there producing or you're not going to be playing. So he didn't practice on Thursday. Will he practice on Saturday? I would say he's a game-time decision for the 49ers. Ronnie Bell is another guy that has to play really, really good. He's going to make this team. He's been competing at training camp. And I would say the last you know three or four practices have probably been his best. So he's trending in the right direction, but he knows he has to have a good a good preseason to be able to make this 49ers roster. And Kalia Davis, he's trying to hold off T.Y. McGill. He's trying to hold off Evan Anderson uh, it, it, and Shaquille Brown. And he's got he's to prove it on the field. And right now, he's, he's better than they are. He's ahead of them. Uh, but we'll see what happens when you get out there in the game. And then a few new faces to watch in this matchup. Uh, Robbie Chosen Anderson or Chosen Anderson or whatever. I don't know. Robbie Anderson. Watch him. We don't know exactly you know, how much he'll play. Uh, but the likelihood is they signed him so he would be able to play in this game. I got to watch his tryout. He looked pretty good. He looked athletic. Uh, still getting in and out of breaks pretty well. Good hands. But we'll see what Robbie Anderson does. Tracy Walker, I talked about him earlier, the safety. He's going to play. Matt Breida is probably going to be the next guy in uh, behind Jordan Mason. And I know a lot of people are saying they would rather have Cody Schrader. I think we're going to see Schrader, but I think Breida is going to be the next guy in for the 49ers. He'll get those uh, second team reps, and then they will go to um, at, uh, they'll go to the next guy with Cody Schrader, and he'll come in. And then Keyshawn Vaughn, the 49ers brought him in, former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. He's going to get some reps at running back as well because of some of the injuries that the San Francisco 49ers have been dealing with, including Patrick Taylor, Elijah Mitchell, and Christian McCaffrey. So 49ers have a lot of question marks because of injury. Uh, they have a lot of you know their key starters that aren't going to play in this game because Kyle Shanahan doesn't like to play them early. They have joint practices next week with New Orleans, which is when Kyle Shanahan likes to get the most work for his guys. He thinks those are more beneficial than any preseason games that the 49ers do. So expect that to be more impactful for the football team. And then, of course, next Sunday, the 49ers play the New Orleans Saints. I expect when that game happens for the 49ers to play their starters for a couple of series in that game. So That'll be our first look at Brock and Debo and George Kittle and some of those guys as they'll get their first uh, look against the New Orleans Saints. Uh, before they have their finale the next Friday, the following Friday, the 23rd, against the Las Vegas Raiders in Las Vegas. So it's going to be fun. The Tennessee Titans present some interesting matchups. I love that they're playing their starters early on in this game, and that'll test some of the young players and some of the backup players for the 49ers to play really well. And we'll see what happens with some of the interior starters. Guy like Jake Brendel, will he play? Malik Collins, will he play because of the injury to Jordan Elliott? Or maybe Elliott will be healthy enough. Uh, there's still some questions that could come up, but overall, I think it's going to be a fun game, and I'm excited about it, and uh, I think it's going to be good to have 49ers football back. I hope you guys all enjoy the game, and of course, we'll be talking about the game after it happens, all those guys who are playing really well, and then of course, uh, I'll be breaking down the All-22 film over on Patreon, so once I get that, I'll be breaking it down, and if you're on Patreon, get ready, the breakdowns are coming, and we'll go through every quarter, break down every single play and talk 49ers football. And for some of it, uh, we'll see how some of these key players do, and you'll get to see uh, kind of like how I do it. My coaches, the, the way the coaches break it down, that's how I break it down because I was a coach for so long. So uh, if you like that kind of thing, that's available to you over on Patreon. If not, that's fine. Come right back here and listen. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're listening on audio platform, 49ers Cutback on Believe. I, I really appreciate everyone that's been giving me five-star ratings. It means a lot, and it helps the channel so much. Uh, kicks it out to other people, uh, but those ratings do a lot, you know, to to help recommend it. So I, I appreciate all of you that do that for me. And this episode was brought to you by Bet Online. The game starts here. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay safe. Remember, the right way is always the 49ers.